Multiplication and Division Review. In this video, we are simply going to review the multiplication and division skills you've learned up to this point, which you will be using a lot this year in sixth grade. First, let's go over some basic vocabulary. On this page, you have three separate sections, and e each section, you're going to use the words in the word bank to fill in the blanks. Each word will be used once per section. Let's take a look at this first division problem. 20 divided by 4 equals 5, and we can go ahead and identify the different parts. Well, 20 is the number that is getting divided by something. It's being split into smaller pieces. So that means it is our dividend. 4 is the number that 20 is being divided by. So that means it is our divisor. And then 5 is the answer, which we also call the quotient. In this section, I'm actually going to have you label each of the numbers with one of the words from the word bank on your own, and then press play to check your answers. So go ahead and pause the video, and when you're confident in your answers, press play to check. You should have 4 as the divisor, 5 as the quotient, and 20 as the dividend. One other way that you will often see division problems is in fraction notation. So I want you to do this one on your own, but instead of us going over this together in the video, you're going to go over this with your group in class tomorrow, meaning I'm not going to give you the answer in the video this evening. So go ahead and put your answers in the boxes and then you'll check with your group tomorrow. Let's try a few multiplication problems just to practice our skills. This first one is basic multiplication, no decimals, no fractions. So I'm actually going to have you do this one on your own. When you're done, you can press play to check your answer. So pause to solve and press play to check. The answer to number one is 5,778. If you got something different from what I did, we need to discuss it in class tomorrow. Now we have a multiplication problem involving decimals. So let's look at how we set this up. I'm going to put the longer number on top, which happens to be 2.38, and then I'm going to put times six on the next row. And I want to count the number of digits behind the decimal, and I'm gonna write it up here and circle it, and I'm gonna save that number for later. It's gonna help me remember to do something. Now I'm just going to multiply ignoring the decimal. So why don't you pause the video to do that and then press play when you're done. So we have multiplied ignoring the decimal and now we need to figure out where the decimal goes on our answer and that's where that little number that I circled comes back into play. There were two total digits after the decimal in the problem so there are going to be two digits after the decimal in the answer which means our decimal We'll go right there. So we have 14 and 28 hundredths as our answer. And make sure to box in your answer. That way you know and I know what your answer is. And finally, we have a fraction multiplied by a whole number, which is something you have done before in fifth grade. So I'm going to go ahead and write 1 fourth times, and then with the whole number I'm going to write it as a fraction. And to do that you may remember that we need to write the whole number as the numerator and the denominator will be 1. So I'm going to check and see if anything can be simplified. It can't yet. So we're going to multiply straight across and we have 1 times 3 equals 3, so 3 is the numerator. And then we have 4 times 1, well that's 4, so that's our denominator. So 1 fourth times 3 is 3 fourths. And now we have division, so that's exciting. This one, again, there's no decimals or fractions, so you should be able to do this one completely on your own. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and set it up. If you're not sure where the placement of the numbers go, just look at the front of your notes and uh, then you can figure that out. So I want you to solve this one on your own and then 
You'll check your answer in a minute. So pause the video to solve on your own and then press play to check when you're confident in your answer. The answer to this problem is 153. If you did not get the same thing I did, look back over your work and see if you can find your mistake. If you are not sure what you did wrong, we'll discuss it in class tomorrow. Now here we have a decimal divided by a whole number. And so that number, the first number in the problem, 74.4, that is our quotient, or not the quotient, that's the dividend, sorry. So that is what we are going to put underneath the division bar, 74.4. Outside of that, we're going to put 12, which is the divisor. And now we are going to divide. We don't have to worry about the decimal just yet. Um, but if we want to, to make things a little easier for ourselves, we can go ahead and bring it straight up into our answer bar. And so we know where the decimal is going to be placed. Now we just divide as usual. So why don't you pause the video to do the division and then we'll check after you're done. So press pause to solve and then press play to check your answer. The answer to this problem is 6.2 or 6 and 2 tenths. If you got something different, check to see if you can figure out where you made your mistake. And if you cannot find it, we will discuss it tomorrow in class. Last, but certainly not least, we have a division problem where we are dividing a fraction by a whole number. And this is something you should have done in fifth grade. So we're going to keep in mind that keep change flip thing that you may have talked about last year. We're going to keep the first fraction, change the, multiple, or the division symbol to a multiplication symbol, and then flip the second fraction. Well, I have one half divided by eight, which is a whole number. So first we need to write eight as a fraction. And remember, we do that by writing eight over one. So then we can do keep change flip. We'll keep the first fraction. It'll stay one half. Change the division sign to a multiplication symbol. And then we will flip one eighth upside down. And now our division problem has become a multiplication problem, which we know how to solve. So we'll do one times one, and that gives us a numerator of one. And then we do two times eight, which gives us a, numer a denominator of 16. So the answer here is one sixteenth. This brings us to the last little section of your notes, which is a little thing that says questions. And you can do one of two things here. Let's say that you did not understand something in the lesson. This is where you're going to write a question of confusion, which would be, how do I do, and then whatever it is you don't understand. Or you can say, I don't understand this part. Um, so you can write a question of confusion if there's something you don't understand. However, if you feel like you totally get it, then you don't need to write a question of confusion. But instead of writing the question of confusion, you're going to need to write a problem for your group to solve. So we were working on multiplication and division. You would write either a multiplication problem or a division problem for your group to solve. So go ahead and write one of those two things underneath that question section, and you are done for the evening.